Welcome, my friends, to Professional Human Design Analyst Training. My name is Lavina Archers. I am proud to be an International Human Design School Certified Professional Teacher. We are going to be talking about the analyst training programs at the International Human Design School. You can find us at ihdsschool.com. And one of the things that we're really wanting you to know when it comes to being an analyst, the first and foremost, most important priority is to recognize the impact of conditioning. Not only in yourself, of course, because you can only take someone as far as you yourself have been able to go. But your job as an analyst is also to see the other in their power. They're empowering their personal authority process and to know the impact of conditioning on them so that you can help guide them through that powerful resolution of the dilemmas through the action of authority. When you describe and encourage the perception of that other through following the energy of themselves, you're going to make a difference. You're going to make an impact. That impact may not be felt until years down the road if that person is dedicated to their experiment. They might be writing to you, you know, all excited, all happy, delighted, because years later, they listened to that analysis with you. And they said, Oh, my gosh, I get it now. Say, they say that I've had that happen many times myself, or they might be not as happy but relieved. They might be crying. They might want to follow up with you for the next step in their journey. If you find this work to be part of your calling, as I do, you're in the right place. I want to welcome you to this presentation where we're going to talk about comprehending conditioning. The fundamental nature of conditioning is to reinforce the message that that conditioning is the most important thing in the world. Your mind inside of your head about yourself will attempt to keep your attention riveted on the conditioning. That conditioning coming from splits, according to the hierarchy, in alignment with the affinities. And if you don't know what those mean, you're going to learn in our analyst training. To comprehend the conditioning, what people are oblivious to that actually runs the show that they identify with their mind's eye. That is the biggest relief, my friends, when you can get out from under the thrall of the conditioning, the program, the people, your past history, what you think should be, when you can let go, disassociate from that negative and false belief system inside of you that's riding you to your death, to the depression or despair, to the discomfort, to the dis-ease. When you can let go of that mind story, and you can instead be an unattached observer of the openness. Witness. Watch. Don't believe me. Try it and see. Use your authority to make decisions, not the I inside of your head about yourself. Today we are going to be talking about the awareness of conditioning. Because understanding the personality without connection to the design is going to be part of our process today. And we're going to work with the chart of Alan Leo. Now, in reality, when you look down at that chart, you may think that that chart is so full. And if you're new to this design experiment, you might think, oh, that's so much definition. How lucky they are. How fortunate, how blessed, blah, blah, blah. Really, it is about whether or not you can pay attention to your authoritative process, in this case, the sacral response, the energy resource, the lighting up of energy. And even if this being were to be told in no uncertain terms about the openness and the conditioning factor, that awareness of that conditioning accomplishes nothing in and of itself. It is about following the decision-making process, aligning with one's truth, one's inherent authoritative process, your decision-making strategy. So just a reminder, just because we know this doesn't fix what's happening with the shadow self. When you look at the basic need of the not-self mind, it is that it has to 
satisfy the demands of its openness. This is raw, raw's way, raw's, raw's words, raw system, human design system showing us the science of differentiation. And yet funnily enough, in the shadow self, it's a lot more homogenized. The science of differentiation is the study of what makes us different. The openness does not. Although we have a specific factor, you could say, of mm, life aspects within the openness that can pull us towards this or that or a different hierarchy, in general, the shadow self, the openness, is really easy to predict once you get the language down. And that's one of the things that you'll learn at our classes at IHDS. So now shadows can be incredibly transformative, according to Ra. When you introduce somebody to their shadow, that black cloud that can get in the way of their shining light, you bring them to the one thing that can help them totally transform their life. And they know it. And you know it because you too have gone through this process yourself. We have to get them to be aware that that shadow is the most important thing for them to grasp so that they can understand what is going on so that they're aware of how to avoid that pitfall. They can avoid it. How do they avoid it? They trust what they've never trusted before in their life, their authority. They let go of trusting all the places where they've tried to give authority over to either their mind or others. That's what is speaking when we look at the openness. So our shadows can contain gifts for us, our learning and wisdom potentials so that others may also learn from our process. Because once you've mastered something, and you use it for others, wisdom for others, that is part of our outer authority. Any place where you have openness, you have the potential to bring your light of awareness to the other, your personal process, your experience, the depth of your awareness. Now, if we look at Alan Leo, we're going to find when we look at any chart, really, is that the most basic structure is about activation and definition. Activations and definition. Now, the next basic structure is going to be about what is unconscious, the design. The design is our genetic body imprint, our physical imprint, this one precious body with its one precious life, that moment of imprinting that creates our physiology, our form. And then we have the duality of the conscious activations, the personality construct. When we explore the shadow self, that is the next basic structure. So we had defined and the next thing we have is not defined. One gets hypnotized by one's conditioning. We can crack the not self in partnership with our clients. If they're dedicated, if they're open, if they're receptive to it, we can crack the not self with our clarity about how it works and get the alignment of the mind with the true process of personal liberation to be combined only by referring that very mind, that personality back to the action of strategy and authority. So it's not about trying to fix it just with awareness. The awareness provides the impetus for being dedicated to experimenting with your decision-making strategy. So it's a two-part process. It's not just about awareness. We always come back to entering the experiment. Now, when you look at human design definitions or kinds of definitions, this is what shows the priority within the functions or centers, how that shows up, what shows up. And you learn that in your analyst classes. We're going to prioritize with our example, this simple 
split definition, meaning a basic split definition, with the split activations that can bridge the split. So one of the different ways in which we are subject to conditioning, we have five different definitions. They give us the conditioning elements for prioritization. These elements are in competition with our true self. When we are surrendered to our form's intelligence, this is simply another way of saying following your strategy, honoring your authority, you bypass the conditioning elements, except as sources of information and potential wisdom about the outside world. Everybody has everything in the body graph. Another way of saying that, all of these open areas in the body graph are receptive. They are areas of receptivity. Therefore, potential wisdom about what's out there. So we have a not-self shadow hierarchy. The conditioned not-self mind tendencies have the most general influence in this order. First, it's the dream rave design and the type change. We have what are called ghost gate weak points just at the very surface and further depth and detail is taught in dream rave analysis. That's the top of the hierarchy. Secondarily, we have the bridging gates or channels for our basic or quad split definitions. Furthermore, we have the heart center, our willpower function, always trying to prove yourself with material achievements. Ring a bell. Solar plexus, the emotional intelligence function, we have avoiding confrontation and truth, feeling touchy and nervous. The G, the higher self, we're looking for love and direction. What's my role here? I'm confused. Who should I be when I grow up? Sixth, we have the splenic center. We have the survival awareness or intelligence, holding on to things that are not healthy for you due to fear. Further, we have the Ajna, the conceptualization process, pretending to be certain mental anxiety. Now, if you're having trouble remembering, just check this out. We have the one, two, three punch, one, two, and three right here. Okay, look for those first. And then after that, look for the other awareness functions. Why? Because fear drives humanity's not self, fear is an incredible push of the not self shadow. Further, we have the head inspiration function, thinking about things that don't matter to you, losing focus, trying to answer everybody else's questions. And then further, the root drive and stamina, we have stressed and pressured, hurrying for no good reason, that is also influential to the not self shadows. And then we have our sacral energy resource. When we don't know when is enough is enough, we try to do it all by ourselves. We're overzealous. We're militant, thinking that if it's to be, it's up to me. Mm -mm. That is one of the shadows. And our last shadow, throat, communication and action, trying to attract attention and be the star. So that's the general hierarchy you're going to learn more specificity when you take higher level training. But in general, you can pretty much, mm, Ra's promise is map out the not self like this. And we teach this in our lower level training. It's the order that we teach the shadows in, in BG5. It's what we teach in our mm, basic training. Now look underneath. When you look underneath on the body graph surface, it's just a surface game, but in understanding the life that will live out in this body graph, our job is not to look at the surface in this illusion way. Our job is to deal with what's actually happening in the life. And this is where a lot of people who don't take the qualifications, the certifications, in alignment with the IHDS and Jovian Archive, when they don't learn how the system actually works, they make up things. Okay, they 
trying to deal with the illusion when you don't really know how the mechanics works is like trying to fix a car without going to school. So we want to pop the hood. We want to look underneath. What's underneath? When we separate out the chart, we are not looking at an ego manifester and a split definition generator. Sorry, not true. This person cannot trust their mind's process of their egoic willpower nature. That's not how this works. So don't misidentify with calling this, oh, you're a conscious ego manifester and unconscious. Mm -mm. The design split apart does seem to appear that way. But remember, we're popping under the hood. We're breaking things apart. We're learning how to interpret the characteristics and qualities from what is conscious versus unconscious. That's one of the most important things to remember. You're just looking at what's conscious versus what's unconscious. And we have concentrated conditioning wherever there are prioritizations. Like as an example, remember this is a split. And so what happens is we start there. And what shows up is the mind will say, I must, I never, I will, I should, I won't, I always, I cannot, because it's a not self mental construct. I can remember before human design constantly saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. It was a constant mantra inside of my, I can't do that. I can't, I just can't. My mind thinks, remember to use that as a tool rather than identifying with I, my ideas. My ideas need to be put out into the world. You never listen to me for my ideas. You know, my mind thinks this idea is really good. Would you like to hear my idea? This idea compared to that idea, this one really seems like it might be satisfying, you know, because this is a receptive place. But what the mind says inside of the head about the self is it always goes to black and white thinking. So it's extreme and often rigidly held, even diametrically opposed opposites. Have you ever caught yourself in a lie where you realized you said your mind said this thing and then a few moments later you say something else because you're trying to justify or rationalize what you just said compared to what you're going to say or what you're trying to say or what you're trying to convince the other person you think you're certain of. I've been there. <laughs> I remember. I can remember doing that. Black and white thinking shows up as should and shouldn't and ought to and you ought to. They better. Life would be better. If only persistent complaints and upsets, the mind would, for this guy, will show up with making a decision in order to avoid frustration. What you resist persists, yes? These complaints, these upsets, these chaotic beliefs inside of the rigidly held ideas, we can say with this guy, yeah? Ideas about who oneself is who one thinks what self is. Remember, Ra would say the personality is who you think you think you think you are. And the design is the body's imprint. It is the life living its life, its experience. Unbeknownst and usually unaware, that personality completely oblivious to its uh -huh, uh -uhs, or its sounds that turn into words, word formulas. This one can speak in words, in articulation. So consciousness, remember, the journey here in the beginning is really to understand the personality and its dilemma. Understanding the personality in and of itself without any connection whatsoever to the design. That's our first step. Looking only at the personality, the consciousness of the awareness. So here it is. This is what that person is consciously identified with, unaware of everything that was unconscious. Now there is, remember, we're not looking at Alan Leo anymore when we split apart the chart. Alan Leo is a construct created by that magnetic monopole that holds us together in this 
illusion of being separate from the totality, this personality with that design, this design configuration with this personality configuration, that monopole holds the key. And the moment that person is following their response mechanism, in this case, their authoritative process, now we have the opportunity for the realignment of the conscious passenger consciousness to this physical form, and then we have the potential for the awareness to flower and bloom, for them to be motivated correctly, for them to see things clearly, rather than having their view skewed all the time. It is the definition of the life force that creates the authoritative process in our solar beings. The channels create the life force. For the lunar beings, your life force is in your lunar cyclical nature. There we go. Okay. So all body graphs are constantly in movement. A design is determined by unique energy movement through circuitry. Movement is truth. Without movement, we become stagnant and stuck and we decay and we die. Yes? If you couldn't move one whit, everything's in movement. Your design is in movement. Want to see my movement in my 30s? <laughs> Saturn cycle. That's my movement. All of these energies, learning about life at that time, movement. Movement is part of truth. So what you're going to want to learn how to do is see the body graph movement, the energetic flows from pressure to expression, the thematics that flow into each other. Understanding how this circuit board is hardwired. That's what we're looking at when we're looking at definition. We're seeing the hardwiring the hard wiring is what we can develop as a strength. Oftentimes that has been something we've perfected before. And this is our truth. This is our being. This is our sovereign nature. So see the movement of the energy. See underneath, pop open the hood. See what we're dealing with here. And I'm going to guide you through how we're going to work with this one first and foremost, Alan Leo. Here we're looking at the purest state of who he thinks he is. Conscious personality construct is who we think we are. It doesn't mean that it ends up that we precisely think this way because you're going to see now that there are things that are going to change it. Watch. Down here, this personality crystal data at this level, it's just personality crystal imprinting, just data. This is the database on one side, who we think we think we are. The joke is we have just aspects here, some of these, and yet our mind oftentimes over identifies with what? The other side of the channel. So here's an example. There's that 63 that's going to hook in to meet that four. And so if that person is in relationship with that other, they may over identify. Then there's that 11 that meets that 56 as well. Every quantum, the quantum being the unification of the two conscious personality, unconscious design. And then when we look at the quantum here of one side of the channel versus the other side of the channel, that quantum is something totally different. So we're just looking at aspects here now, just aspects. Reality is we're simply looking at aspects. Another way of saying this, nuances and subtleties, aspects, life aspects, okay? Th specific thematics about specific planetary activations that stand for aspects of your life, life aspects. Okay. So think of planets as life aspects. Interpret the chart so that the other person knows what you're talking about. Instead of saying Saturn, say this is the disciplinarian life aspect or whatever seems most appropriate. Awakening can become possible. We want you to begin to see something about the personality here. 
the way in which ultimately its awakening can become possible. We begin with the centers always doesn't make any difference here. This illusion that becomes Alan Leo happens to be a defined sacral and a defined root. The illusion here is that the personality knows about that, and in fact, it doesn't. That defined sacral doesn't mean anything whatsoever to someone who is not aware, who is not educated on who they are for themselves, period. If they've not been awakened to their truth, making decisions that they can trust. The awakening can become possible if they attune to their genetic code. But that unconscious design doesn't make any difference to the personality. In fact, it's one of the deepest areas of conditioning if the mind believes the story. Because one of the first things to recognize is how much a person is conditioned from within. Within. All of conditioning, in fact, comes from within because that's where we're processing it. Even though there may be a transit out there that's pulling you this way or that way or a person, you're experiencing it in your body. So it's not too far of a leap to see that the body imprint can be a force of conditioning on the mind's process. So here within this particular graph of the personality, we see all the centers that are undefined, not through the conscious personality construct anyway, all of them as potential conditioning forces. It is within, okay, within. Those not self strategies are right there inside of you. And guess what speaks for it? Your mind, all of them regardless of whether or not in the overall view of this configuration that they end up being defined. So if we go back to Levina's chart and we change it to show just the personality, there you see all of my shadows and distractions, all of them. Despite the fact that unconsciously Levina has these defined. To the mind, my mind would still back in the day, even up until recently, 2019, I can remember asking someone else, should I do this thing over here? <laughs> you know, abdicating authority because my mind thought maybe it might be better to do this other thing. Oof. Letting go, just letting go. Anything your mind thinks as being truth, always validating, always testing and see inside of the body. The body is the life. These not self strategies, as far as the personality is concerned, any definition of those centers is going to bring out a tendency towards the shadow state. Anything. You are receptive wherever there is openness. So all of these places here in the order, avoiding confrontation and truth, touchy and nervous, being the primary shadow state in the general hierarchy. However, when you go into analyst training, particularly at the differentiation degree program, you're going to find a more mm, accurate way of analyzing charts that will help you prioritize much more specifically, much more um, accurately because you're going to take into account the life aspects. Now remember, in the openness, this is where we're flexible and fluid. And so it's much less predictable, but you're going to get even more accurate. I love that. I love accuracy. I love prioritization and pinpointing details, though I may not be consistent with them. I trust what comes out of my mouth, even if it, oops, sometimes I make a mistake. And that's one of the things I recommend all of you get good with. You do not have to be an expert at this in order to make a difference in someone else's life. Please do not compare yourself to anyone else that you see out there in your study groups. Never compare yourself to me, by golly. And also, remember that those people that are on your fractal path in your reality that you come into contact with, they're going to get exactly what they need from you. No more, no less from whatever stage in the deconditioning process you are at. So let yourself off the hook 
You don't have to be perfect. Just be yourself and everything will be in the right place at right timing. Okay? So, herein is the potential for the not-self strategies. Again, the intensity of the strategy and the way it's going to operate in the illusion on the surface is something that is going to adjust. And it's going to adjust to the impact of the design crystal. That design crystal incarnate once compared to life after life, your personality construct incarnating over and over again. The impact of the design crystal is heavy. It's huge because it is the form construct. That design crystal bringing specific and deep conditioning from within where we see two very specific kinds of conditioning here. The first conditioning is that the personality has to deal with the conditioning it receives from that design crystal. See how we have it larger here than the personality? Larger than life. We have your body. Your body is the life. Your body has its own way. Your body does its own thing. It takes care of itself. It knows what it needs. Trust your body. Trust your form. Of course, in context with the fullest expression of truth, decide using your strategy and authority. Try it and see. We see the design crystal conditioning brings about the deepest problems from within the overall being. That second thing to understand is the impact of others and ultimately the impact of the program itself. Did you know that we can see others in the program, in our cycles? We can literally see people in our lives, in our reality, people that we come into contact with. They are part of the program. People are part of the program. I'm part of your program. Have you seen? So. Second thing, we understand how the program itself, others, and the program, everything outside of ourselves, perceivably, what we think we are not part of, that specific deep conditioning from without is paramount to understand. Why? It tells you the reasons for following your strategy and authority that you can't figure this out with your mind. It's impossible. So where the sun and earth are in the personality construct within our human design, something that is enormously important because it changes the rules right away. Changes the rules. Guess what? Not everyone gets an opportunity to live out their fullest expression of purpose. And not everyone gets the opportunity to live out the awareness of their purpose alone. It's not on everybody's fractal to wake up. It's really not the point. The point is awareness. So when we look at this personality sun earth configuration and we see that it is part of the personality definition, we know then that they are active principles, active principles. So look at all those aspects. They are part of undefined centers, according to the personality construct. Yes, this is something that we need to see clearly. And of course, there's this completely undefined solar plexus and splenic center. And of course, we have the head, all undefined, according to the personality construct. If you would like to continue the training and learn more, we have many teachers starting at the International Human Design School next semester. Darshana Deborah Matthews is going to be starting PTL 1, semester 1, on May 22nd. Lynette Crisfield is going to be teaching PTL 1, semester 2, on May 17th. Brian Stout is going to be teaching PTL 1, Semester 3, on May 17th. 
next month. And I am going to be teaching PTL 2 semester 1 on May 10th. Lynette is going to be teaching PTL 2 semester 2 May 18th. And Darshana Deborah Matthews is going to be teaching PTL 3 semester 1 May 23rd. I'm going to be teaching PTL 4 on May 18th, and that is your preparation, mentoring, and final exam prep for you to become a certified analyst. If you have any further questions, we have a frequently asked questions area on our website, and I feel complete for now. Thank you so much for